the Archdiocese of Toronto, and the National Catholic Broadcasting Council. Through the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, presents Sunday TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to the celebration of the Sunday televised Mass on the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I am Father Michael Kutz. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is in loving memory of Michael James Curley, who is dearly missed by his family. The second are Stan and Joanne Woods from Coquitlam, British Columbia. This Mass is offered for Marissa on her birthday in gratitude for a gift of life and for her intention. The third is Langevin de Rocher, family from Ontario, in thanksgiving for blessings received and for the living and deceased members of their family. Our thanks to the donors for the gift of this Mass. As we begin this Eucharist on this Thanksgiving weekend here in Canada, we thank God for all God's gift to us, both in our life and in our dying. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise God as we say, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpassed the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does, dares, does not dare to ask, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile field. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a vine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and the people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? Now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it waste, it shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no more upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are the pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry, the word of the Lord. Amen. the nations and planted it. 
it sent out its branches to the sea, and it shoots to the river. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Why then have you broken down its walls, so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it, and all that move in the field feed on it. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and be the peace of the Lord, which surpasses all understanding. It will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. The God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord to go and bear fruit that will last. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenant seized his slaves, beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenant saw the son, they said to him themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these tenants? They said he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in scriptures that the stone built that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For the last three Sundays, our readings have to do with vineyards. First, there was the vineyard and the laborers who came at different hours but were paid the same amount. Then there was the vineyard with the two sons. One said, I won't work, and did. And one said, I will work, and didn't. 
and today we have the vineyard and the tenants who refuse to give the produce. Now the vineyard was a metaphor that the people of Israel understood very well. The vineyard was Israel, the owner was God. Our first reading from Isaiah, a beautiful poem about an owner of a vineyard. He almost sings a love song to it. Look, I loved you so much. I protected you by building a wall. I put the best soil. I planted the choicest vines. And I expected beautiful grapes. And what did I get? I got sour grapes. And I got a produce that was not worthwhile. Now read that same reading again. And this time, instead of the owner, put the Lord. The Lord says to the people of Israel, I have loved you with a great love. I have protected you during the Sinai uh, desert. I led you with a cloud during the day. I led you with fire during the night. I gave you food to eat. I gave you water to drink. I protected you against your enemies, the Amalekites. What did you do? You forsake the covenant. You did not keep the Sabbath. You offered incense to idols, and you rejected me. What should I do to you? I will leave you to your own devices, and let us see whether you can stand on your own feet. And this is a beautiful backdrop to our reading from the Gospel, where Jesus speaks about a vineyard, the same people of Israel, you see, you and I are not used to the idea of, of, of a vineyard being for Israel. For us, the only vineyards we know are the Pella Estates and Inniskillen Estates in the Niagara Falls and the Napa Peninsula, where they have grapes growing. For us, it is baseball and basketball and volleyball and all these other games. And when we speak about the tigers beating the lions, we're not speaking about chaos in the zoo but we are speaking about Hamilton beating the BC Lions. So when we speak about the vineyard and Jesus is speaking, he's speaking about you and me. How do we receive Jesus as the Messiah? Well, the people of Israel did not. They were waiting for the Messiah. And all they got was this man from Galilee. He came from Nazareth. And what good can come out of Nazareth? We knew his father and his mother. We knew his brothers, James and Joseph and Simon and Jude. Who does he think he is? And they tried to throw him over a cliff. And Jesus uses a second metaphor right in the middle of all this, and that gives sense to the whole thing. The stone that was rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. When they wanted to build this temple in Jerusalem, the first thing they did was to build the cornerstone. And then all the other stones were cut in measurement to the cornerstone. They sent the cornerstone to the builders in Jerusalem, and they said, what are we going to do with this? We don't need this now. And so they put it on the side. They rejected the cornerstone. And then the other stones came, and they started building this great temple. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the cornerstone was covered with grass, with chips, with dust, and they forgot all about it. Just like the people of Israel, they saw Jesus and all his works, and they forgot all about him. And then when everything was put together, they said, where is the cornerstone? And they said, we sent it to you already. So they dug among the debris, and sure enough, the cornerstone was there, and it held everything together. Jesus was the cornerstone sent by God for the people of Israel. They were a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart. But who was going to hold them together? It was Jesus. And he came with all the signs that the prophets had foretold. But did they listen to him? The prophet said that he would come from a little town, Bethlehem. And they said, well, he came from Nazareth. The fact was that he did, as we know from the story in the beginning of Luke's gospel. He also did the signs that the prophet Isaiah had mentioned. The Spirit of the Lord will come down upon me, and he will send me to bring the good news to the poor. And Jesus spoke to the poor and the marginalized, and yet they did not receive him. What can we say about you and me today? 
Do we receive Jesus and our call to look after the poor, the marginalized, to look after the people who are downtrodden? Or do we like to put Jesus in a little envelope and put him on the side that we can pray to him on a Sunday or when we come for Mass? And for the rest of the time, we pick on the values that the world around us gives to us because we want to be a part of the world around. And that is exactly what Israel did. They wanted to be like others. God is calling us to open our eyes and see, open our ears and hear, but most especially to open our hearts and receive Jesus as the Messiah, as the cornerstone, as the vineyard that the Lord has given us. God bless you all. Would you join me now as we make our act of faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now pray for all those in our daily televised mass prayer intention book. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For our sponsors, and especially for the repose of Michael Curley, we pray to the Lord. Lord, During the season of thanksgiving, we thank God for all the blessings we have been given. We ask for continued blessings on ourselves, our neighbors, and on our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, We pray for an increase of vocation to priestly and religious life. We pray for blessings on married couples and for those singles within our faith community who see this as their vocation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, receive these our prayers through Christ our Lord. my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands and the praise of your glory for our good and the lost of the church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices and instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. The of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, Jesus humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, 
We sing the hymn of your glory as with one, air, without, with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Francis our Bishop, bishops across Canada and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters. Remember Michael Curley, whom have, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with our Canadian martyrs, Jean de Brebeuf, Isaac Jogue, and companions, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Or lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day 
Now, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go now in the peace of Christ and to celebrate this Thanksgiving, serve the Lord and one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.